And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, previously the creator of Neurosity, now the now the developer of the upcoming weird fa weird fantasy romp known as Warpland, the one and only Gabriel Curioga, and I'm hoping I got it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> you got it right, uh, Mildra. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yep. So how are you how are you doing in what is ostensibly warmer climate than what I'm dealing with? Uh, the war the climate in Argentina right now it's uh, about 25 centigrades. So we are doing great mm -hmm. here. Every everything's relative. Um, yes. <laughs> so it's cer it's certainly been a it's certainly been a hot minute since you re since you released Neurosity. Um, how before we before we get into Warpland proper, how mm -hmm. what would what would you say were some of the um, learning experiences you had from developing Neurosity that you hope to take into account with Warpland? Mm, that's a very good question. Uh, from the beginning, I think that uh, what I learned was to how to launch a Kickstarter campaign. <laughs> because I, I didn't have any experience with that, and I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't even have a pre-launch. So now uh, nah, I'm better prepared for that, and I was... In those days, I was relatively unknown, mm. and I was blessed with the community giving me a chance, and now I, I'm making it up. i going forward, and uh, well, the, the campaign is, uh, I playing a, a bit, I'm playing a bit of advertising, and, uh, and I think the book will be more organized, and I will have, I will be able to uh, pay for a proofreader, something that's very important, and translators and yeah, proper proper people with professional skills. Mm -hmm. And well, I'm very happy so far with the product and how everything is looking for, uh, is looking. And I'm not sure what else to. The the thing is that the book is. Um, totally different. So the the gen the um, gender is different. Uh, neuros neurosity was a cyberpunk, and this is science fantasy. So I moved away from my comfort zone regarding setting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that that does bring me to to the sub to the subject of Warpland. Now. You can now. You kind of answered part of this by say by saying that you're moving out of your particular comfort zone with this, but what would you cite as some as some of the inspirations for developing this particular idea? Uh, the particular inspiration uh, there are quite many, but there are mainly two. Uh, first is uh, the heavy metal comic series. Mm -hmm. Uh, particularly Richard Corbin's work and Druliet, the French illustrator. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there is a literary work that's called Hard to be a God from the Strugatsky brothers, mm -hmm. uh, the guys that also wrote the book that inspired the Stoker film from Tarkovsky. Yep. And uh, in Hard to be a God uh, has also had two uh, film adaptations, movie adaptations. And one of them is a Russian adaptation that's from 2013 mm -hmm. that I have seen that has been quoted as a visual reference for the RPG Morkborg. Uh, I don't know if I'm spelling it right, Morkborg. Um, give, given, given how... Given the given the um, um given the use of umlaut, I think you I think you're close enough. Plus, um, when you're dealing with that, when you're dealing with languages from that region, it's language on hard mode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very difficult. <laughs> uh, but 
uh, that film adaptation was very good. I watched it, and I also watched the 1989 film adaptation that's uh, closer to the movie, and it's uh, specifically science fantasy, mm -hmm. and I feel it like it's totally connected to Warpland. If you want to see how Warpland looks like, just watch the 1989 film adaptation of Hard to Be a God. It's spectacular. Mm -hmm. And for for me, some for for me at the very least, when I looked at the way Warpland was visually, the the other thing that I end up being strongly reminded of is a lot of um a lot of prog music from the from the uh, mid to late seventies. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of prog a lot of prog and a lot of er, a lot of um what would be consider what would be considered early Hogwind. early um that early transition between hard between hard rock and metal. Yes. Um and more contemporary ap approaches such as say um Ghost or The Sword or even uh, Graveyard. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, but what was the question Midra? Sorry, um, I didn't catch the question. Um I'm curious I'm curious if you if you had similar um mu if you had similar musical um inspiration. Tastes. Like if I have similar musical tastes, um, mus not taste, but more of more of musical inspirations and cues when it came to when it came to how you were f nailing down how Warpland was going to look. The, mu the music from the heavy metal movies uh, can be certainly considered that, mm -hmm. and also Hawkwind in particular. I I, I like uh, that band a lot. Mm -hmm. And being a musician myself, I was al always uh, inclined towards the heavy psych genre or stoner rock or mm -hmm. all that. But that's a bit more 80s, not this is, uh, I feel it's more 70s, right? Yeah. The earlier, yes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and when, when it comes to, when it comes to, when it comes to um, war when it comes to Warpland mechanically, um, how how what would be what would be some aspects that would be that are going to be sim are going to be similar to some to someone who's dabbled with neurosity and what's going to be different? It's going to be the the mechanic itself. It's uh, the same. It's a two to six uh, roll under the attribute. Mm -hmm. And the, way, the main difference is going to be the combat is going to be a bit more dynamic. Uh, I proposed an initiative system based on the black hack that uh, you basically roll wits. If you are successful, you go before the enemies and you are, if you fail, you go after. Mm -hmm. And I'm also proposing uh, damage a damage included in the attack roll. Uh, that's uh, a bit uh, controversial, but mm -hmm. I think it works out great. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, when it comes to the idea of dam of damage added to added to the attack added to the attack roll, what particularly do you mean by that? Because that's something I can take a in a whole host of different ways. It means that uh, you do the attack roll, and if you are successful, the roll dice themselves indicate how much damage you are making. The better the, the, the result of the attack, the more damage it will make. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is directly linked to the might stat. All right. Um, you had... The way you had said it, you had said that that might be controversial. Do you think that's because a lot of people are used to rolling damage after rolling in attack? Yes, yes, totally. Uh, and I understand that uh, it's something quite difficult to do. And I think that one of the problems mainly is that it is difficult to provide a good um, a good dynamic number of of the, of the damage itself you know uh, in in this system with this system you can go from one to six mm -hmm. plus uh, all the bonus modifiers uh, you get from using a particular weapon yeah uh, so it's it's good enough i think it's good enough it has worked 
great. We are uh, we have been working with three playgroups. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them are in like their 25th session. They are all fanatics. They're, they can st they uh, put aside the rest of their games to play Warblam. So I'm very happy with the results. And they're including that system for their own settings as well. Now, the way you describe it, I, I um, now that I, now that I have a bit of an idea, and com and combining that with the roll under approach that you use, I can kind I can kind of see where you're going with that approach to damage, where somebody would want to tr where some instead of trying to roll as low as possible, somebody would want to try and roll as close to the line as possible. Like blackjack, you need to get the closer you can to your uh, stat number. Mm -hmm. um, Fading Suns does some does something similar with its victory point system. Oh, I didn't know that. Although, um, does it? Well, do you like it? Does it work? <laughs> oh, it it work. It's it works. Um, it's it's it it's um it's one of those things that that in its case builds upon the attribute skill formula. Um, mm -hmm. but ov obviously that's not that's not something that you're you're using since you're go you're going for more um more of an old school approach than what the, than what they are doing. Yes, we are using skills, but uh, skills uh, just determine what you are uh, it's a bit redundant, redundant but uh, what you are uh, skilled in doing mm -hmm. and so if you try to like track uh, an animal and you are not a skilled hunter you will ha you will have a, a penalty modifier mm -hmm. and in the skills also uh, determine the, the equipment you will start with when you create your character yeah now when it now when it comes to get when it comes to um when it comes to gifts, I mean, obviously, yes. you obviously with this you have the warp and the void, and I can, I can, I could kind of guess that there, that it's somewhat analogous to to the mental powers from um from neurosity, but w in what ways would it be similar mechanically? In what ways would it be different? And furthermore, what's going to be the difference between the warp and the void? Uh, it's going to be quite different from neurosity. Yeah? Neurosity does not have uh, this type of thing. It's not similar to the transfer uh, mm -hmm. phenomena in Neurosity. Uh, basically, the warp is uh, the light, uh, but deviated or transformed by the technology of the previous civilization that inhabited the world. Mm -hmm. um, they destroy the light essence, and it became the warp. That is like... Uh, a very powerful uh, 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 energy that mutates everything it touches and it it it, uh, it lives in the sky. It's mm -hmm. like uh, it's on the center of the sky because uh, Warblam is um, is like an egg, and the world itself is, uh, sits on the inner layer of the egg. So the warp is like the yolk or something like that. <laughs> if you can imagine it. Yeah. And so from time to time, it's like a big storm and it changes everything in the landscape, the people, and mutates everything. And gifts from the warp uh, account to uh, mutations that are beneficial. Of course, you will also have mutant flaws, but the gifts are the beneficial mutations you can have. Like, I don't know, infravision or maybe... Uh, a tentacle arm or a, a big size or whatever. It's, there are uh, 20 types of partial mutations and six complete uh, mutations. And then 20 mutant flaws. Uh, and then the void is like, uh, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's the negative essence or the, the the energy that consumes everything it has it was also it started in an abyss that was created uh, in in a war in the previous civilization mm -hmm. and from from there from that abyss that made like a crack in the egg that's the world uh, on the shell 
is there are like entities from the other side trying to communicate and pervert reality. And, and so they offer gifts to humankind. Mm -hmm. And these gifts are, uh, work, they work like spells or magics. And in order to, to use them, you need to spend a willpower point and make a lore check. It's very easy and simple. Mm -hmm. and, when it, and when it comes to... The other thing, the other thing that I'm curious about, because I'm get, I'm guessing this, t I'm guessing this ties into it, is the matter of taint. Yes. I'm, I'm guessing that ties into people who, um, who, decide to lean a little bit more towards the void. Yes. Uh, in order to be able to acquire a gift, you need to obtain at least uh, one point of taint. Mm -hmm. There's like the void's essence in you, and that. Uh, starts to transform some aspects of yourself. There is also a table for uh, taint effects. Mm -hmm. uh, some people might have uh, their own shadow uh, that will, will conspire against them. Some people will have nightmares. Some people will have a voice that uh, tries to convince them to commit minor evil acts. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, the taint can uh, increase if you make a... Uh, uh, if you, if you get a double uh, once or a double six uh, when casting a spell, you will acquire further taint. And the more taint you have, uh, the more uh, profound effects will be. Mm -hmm. Is it a you case can where... turn, you, you can uh, even uh, progressively turn into a leech uh, by acquiring taint. Is it a case where if some if somebody has too much taint, then they um then their character would become effectively an NPC? It it can happen. Um, I wouldn't say that you will lose the character, uh, but it will be very difficult to handle it because you can be like uh, possessed for a whole scene by a demon. Uh, you can have a, there is also a one that. You will you will start to fade away. Yeah, you may fade away in like three or four months. Uh, so something like you need to have uh, a check on that, and it uh, it makes the the players very uh, respectful of the of the gifts. They don't want to use it too much. Uh, only in special cases because it's uh, very dangerous to deal with the void. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And when it now, when it comes to when it comes to um, when it comes to the pro, when it comes to the whole thing with um, skill, with someone mm -hmm. be, with someone being with someone being skilled with someone being skilled, because um, I noticed on the on the example character it, it has skilled as warrior, and I'm guessing mm -hmm. that the skill list that you have is intentionally broad. So, so yes, they are quite they are quite broad and generic. Um, for example, if you are a skilled warrior, uh, you are a guy that can uh, maybe hint what are the numbers of an army uh, several miles away. Um, you will also be able to use uh, a wide range of weaponry. If you are not a warrior, you wouldn't be able. You are not skilled at using a sword. Mm -hmm. for example, or not uh, capable of wearing armor above light... Uh, uh, yeah, light, not, don't, not capable of wearing light uh, medium armor or heavy armor. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite generic, but it works, uh, I, I think, by common sense. There are several examples and explanations, but there are not many confusions around what is a skill or not. And there are about uh, 15 skills. There are, uh, we have you know, Beastmaster, it's a guy that uh, can talk with animals and has an animal companion. Uh, you have a merchant, you have a technocrat, a guy that's saving with the ancient technology of the previous civilization. You have the warlock, you have a thief, you have a, a bard. Um, there is even a fool that works like the lack with his luck. Mm -hmm. 
And you can have several skills that depends on the lore stat. You can be like a, a warrior bard. You mm -hmm. You're not determined by only one skill. Yeah. Now, when it now when it comes to when it comes to, I want I want to tackle on I want to tackle something that you had said earlier. When it comes to combat, you said that you were shooting for a more dynamic um, style of combat compared to your previous work with Neurosity. Mm -hmm. Could you go? Could you go into what ex what exactly you meant? What you exactly you meant by that, and what that, and how you're trying to go about that that particular goal. Uh, regarding combat, well, I think that it's a combination of using uh, I don't know the critical uh, the critical hit table and how complications affect uh, the combat. It's a bit more easy and a bit more explained. And uh, the, there is a, a turn dynamic that uh, works very easy by using this black hack system I mentioned. And uh, it's, it's really like fast and uh, I wouldn't say it's as lethal, but it's very, it's very gritty. You know? you can, uh, you, it's, it will be very difficult to resist more than two or three hits. And uh, I'm very happy with the, with the results and how it, uh, how it respects uh, each uh, character's concept, individuality. Uh, they, everyone have their, have their own skills and uh, they are very differentiated. And it's very difficult to do that with simple systems sometimes without using a, a class. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think uh, we are on a very good path. I, I think uh, uh, the, the backers are going to be very happy. <laughs> yeah. And some, something, else that, something else that I'm, that I am a bit, I'm a bit curious about is, despite, despite the bent of weird fiction, would you say that when it comes to the fantasy stylings that you're going for, um, Warpland has as the most in common with swords and sorcery styles of fantasy. Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Yes, also with the sword and planet, I think generally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think it's a it's a good mix uh, of both of them. It's also a bit post-apocalyptic because of you know the desert and the mutations mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, so I think it's a, a nice mix of a bit of everything. Yeah, but it it works uh, as a um, as an individual thing. No, it, it doesn't feel like a, a mashup. Uh, it it has uh, once you get the hang of the of the coherence of the world, uh, you just uh, players uh, feel very comfortable dealing with it. And the lore is quite uh, it's quite complex. Uh, I, we have only been able to dabble on the surface of it, but I don't want to bore you with a lot of details of the of the genesis of all that. Um, mm -hmm. But we use a lot also. Uh, I, I forgot to mention H. G. Wells and from the Time Machine, mm -hmm. the um, the idea of the Morlocks and the Aloy, uh, like uh, two different species that differentiated from the human being. And all that, and we are using them as uh, the Morlocks. We are using them as uh, as the basic enemies of uh, of of the world, of the main enemies. Mm -hmm. And when it when it comes to given given the fact that you're essentially setting up Warpland like a sandbox, would mm -hmm. would would you say that the, that Warpland's setup is one that could be that could be utilized in more hex crawl style play? Yes, uh, I even had the dilemma of making the map a hex crawl, but in the end, I decided to go for a more uh, abstract, um, yeah, abstract idea. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love hex crawls. Yes, uh, totally. Maybe someday we can do a hex crawl. Uh, I like sandboxes, but I think I our, our campaign, at least the one I am uh, DMing, uh, I like to 
I, I prefer going for a more abstract uh, orientation. I, I, I rather not have a battle maps. I rather not have a a figure placed on on the map. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it's um, so, sometimes it works like a mini game to do that. Uh, it's uh, it's great. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but I prefer to concentrate just on role playing. And uh, if everyone starts looking at where the figure is and start moving it, they are not, uh, they are a bit away from their own uh, of, of the communal imagination everyone is having on the session sometimes. Uh, at least that's my position regarding mm -hmm. that. The, the map uh, we made is, uh, I don't know, have you been able to see it? Um, no, I haven't. It's, it's great. We're going to upload it in this week. It's on the updates. All right. Um, now, when it, now, I do want to I do want to talk on so, on some of the on some of the things that are that are getting at that you have added and um. I and I will I will give you your props for managing to smash through all of the uh, stretch goals that you had that you had um, planned. Yes. Um, I'll, but the there's two that um, there's two that I'm in particular curious of, curious about as far as their details. The first is the three adventures that you have planned: the tribe, the society, and the cult. Yes. Um, now I'm not going to ask for I'm not going to ask for the full story with each of those with each of those adventures. But there's a but uh, beyond the skinny, are these are, how many pages would you say each of those adventures is going to be? Like a, less than a dozen. Yes, yes. They are not going to be very large adventures. They're going to be introductory adventures of, of the world. Mm -hmm. That is why uh, we made three of uh, three different concepts. Uh, the society relates to a technocrat uh, society that is illegal, mm -hmm. that's based in Citadel, the capital city in Warland. Then uh, the tribe, you will be playing a mutant tribe. Mm -hmm. And the cult, uh, the, the party will be belonging to uh, warlocks, will be all war warlocks, uh, a demonic cult. Mm -hmm. So you can have like a taste of each area of the world from a different perspective. Oh. All right, I can see, I can see that. And um, the other is the sky and weather generator that, you get, that you're working on with the Aether. Um, well, well, the sky is a really big thing in Warland. We started to rain heavily here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you brought the bad, the bad weather with you, uh, Mildred. <laughs> um, the sky is a very big thing uh, in Warland uh, because, as I said, it's, um, it's where the warp energy is. And so we have a very nice table uh, very with very trippy 70s psychedelic visuals. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea is that uh, in each game session, the dungeon master can roll to see what, what will be the, the sky, and that particular phenomena will last for one d six days. And it somewhat affects some of the dynamics of the world. It's, there's a sky that makes people a bit enraged, a bit uh, grumpy and there's a sky that uh, makes people a bit sleepy there is a sky that uh, makes all the flora uh, uh, explode with full of uh, plants and everything there is a uh, storm so there's all very trippy visuals and very uh, interesting effects that uh, uh, merge with the atmosphere and there it's about 12 pages long uh, in the book only mm -hmm. the the, the sky table, the ether. We call it the ether, it's not sky. And we will be having, we had the idea of making the, the generator web-based, so you can just click on the generator and you will have a full big image of the visual and with the proper description of effects. Yep. And within the... Within that, I'm, get, I'm guessing that there's, that there's going to be 
a fair a fair amount of resource for um for give for giving GMs an idea an idea of what of how good or bad the weather <clears throat> is in that instance. Yes, yes, of course. There is also another table just for types of rain, because the rain is is not is never also typical rain. You have I don't know some rains like little weird tadpoles crystal that dissolve into water when they fall and. There is also like a rain that's just like one big splash falling uniformly upon the land. It's uh, all very like surreal. Mm -hmm. I would I would make a joke about raining cats and dogs, but well, it did <laughs> yes. it it did it did at one point rain frogs. So yes, I know. <laughs> so it's so um. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's completely out of the or I'm not saying it's completely out of the ordinary. Plus, some um, whenever 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 I've done a tornado in ga in games, I always make sure to have a I always make sure to have a sign that says "Beware of cows." <laughs> or in or in some cases, if I'm going completely ridiculous, "Beware of beware of falling anvils." Oh, that's a. Uh... A very uh, strong wind. <laughs> well, I've se I've seen what ha I've seen what happens after after cer after certain kinds of weather because I was fascinated by ex by extreme weather growing up. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm in the Midwest. You know, smack dab in the middle of Tornado Alley. I think it. Uh... Uh, it's interesting how it is such a unforeseeable, unforeseeable event sometimes, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean it changes everything. I think that one of the themes, uh, besides obscurantism and maybe prejudice and survivalism, is mm -hmm. a change in warbland. That's why it's called warp. Uh, so it's like a constantly evolving change and. People just, uh, they don't have anything to hold on to when everything's changing around you. You, you, don't, have, uh, you don't have stars to uh, orient yourself when traveling. Uh, you never know if that mountain you saw the last year will stay there. Uh, maybe the town you will visit, uh, you are visiting now has been mutated with goats and everyone is goat people now. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, that goes very well with the sandbox approach of constantly improvising on that, and not uh, and, and and everything being so unexpected. Yeah. Now, give now. Um, obviously, this is not the first. This is not the first time that um, that you ha that you've integrated a that you've integrated a soundtrack into into your into your work but what i'm curious about was which is which came first did did you end up did you end up making the music and then make the and then make the world of warpland around it or was it the other way around no it was it, i i chose one of the tracks that were loosely inspired on a science fantasy idea i had for an rpg uh, that it, so it was a very similar setting, and uh, I felt it connected wonderfully with it. Uh, it's a very heavy, psych, droning soundtrack. You can uh, listen a glimpse of it in the in the trailer we made, mm. and I feel it works wonderfully. It's uh, it's about 15 minutes long. And we have been using it uh, for uh, when traveling uh, in our sessions. Mm -hmm. It sets the tone and the mood. <laughs> right. um, now, when it now when it comes to when it comes to the um, the the Kickstarter exclusive book that you're adding on the Forbidden Book of Tangible Reality. Um, yes. Is in what way? Now, sometimes I've seen other other games put out a 
a uh, slimmed down version of their core book specifically for players and just refer to it as the player's guide. Um, Numenera does something mm -hmm. like this. Um, yes. Is the forbidden is the forbidden book in this case similar to that kind of that kind of setup, or do you, or are you doing your own spin on the concept? I think that partially it's going to be that uh, I call it like a data book, but mm -hmm. it will it will also include like uh, strange uh, things like um, what are the name uh, riddles. Uh, riddles can be a big thing in Warland. Uh, they are like a popular custom. Mm -hmm. um, there are also sphinxes in, in Warland. The sphinxes uh, are basically, well, the general populace that doesn't know it, but they are a intel artificial intelligence that has uh, survived from the previous, gener previous civilization. So they are a bit like cryptic and they 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 work with riddles and there's a there's oh, there's this um, very Sumerian and Mesopotamian uh, theme also in the in the world, you no, know, uh, the very beginnings of mankind and all that, and so the the book uh, will include uh, like hard uh, data like tables, uh, very simple and in a very simple layout for players and to have it around the table. But it will also include some uh, bits and pieces of uh, odd stuff that are not included on in the manual, All right. in the core book. And how many, how many pages would you say that, bo that book is going to be compared to the core book? Uh, to be around 25 pages. 25, pa 25 mm -hmm. pages. Um, all right. And where, whereas the um, as the the core book itself, I think you I think you mentioned is going to be around 140. Yes, yes, roughly. We don't know yet. It can be 160 or 135, maybe, but roughly yes, because we are still uh, making it, designing it. All right, now. When now, um, when it comes to when it comes to the 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 um, the citadel, which you've mentioned before, is kind of the kind of the dominant authority within Warpland. Um, something that I'm cu I'm curious about is with Neurosity, obviously, ev obviously you had a um, you had a hierarchy of powers in. Mm -hmm. Something like Warpland is that st is that still going to be the case as strictly, or is there going to be a bit more wiggle room when people are far out when people are far outside of the Citadel's reach? Yes, when you are outside Citadel's reach, you will have certainly a bit more wiggle room. Um, I think it's not uh, well. As I said, one of the main themes is obscurantism. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, the pressure uh, comes mostly from this uh, uh, type of religion uh, that follows a tenet. Um, the tenet is the one that uh, tells people uh, it's a, a, an ancient scripture that uh, forbids technology, forbids knowledge, forbids uh, knowing how to read and write uh, and all that thing because uh, they, uh, the argument that these were the things that collapsed the world. Uh, so if we don't do them, the world will, uh, will not collapse again. Uh, so that's the logic behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, Citadel will be, uh, will be dangerous specifically for uh, technocrats and also warlocks because uh, dark magic is also a forbidden thing. Uh, that happens in Citadel, but there is another region called Obsidia that is more uh, dark arts uh, uh, oriented, witchcraft oriented. And mm -hmm. they, uh, so each region has uh, like different uh, feelings. You know? uh, I made a special case about uh, making uh, very different the four regions. 
Right, that I that I can definitely get, I can definitely get behind, and that does bring me to the concept of orders because with things with things like um with things like cults and mutant tribes, you've we've kind of delved into that quite a bit. But when it comes to orders, is that more specifically referring to like religious orders and sects, or is that something different? You will have uh, religious orders that. Uh, uh, they worship the the return of the true light. Mm -hmm. As I said, the, there is no no the, the light essence has been deviated. Uh, but you also have like orders like I don't know the Iron Lords, that are the guys that basically basically have the monopoly of the iron pit box in Suno. Mm -hmm. So they get the they they get to sell the iron. So they have all the iron in in Warblam is based in there. So most of the rest of the people, if they want to have a dagger, they will mostly buy an obsidian dagger or a bone dagger or a, or a stone dagger unless they can afford to buy an iron one. Um, so yes, you will have secret societies, you will have orders, you will have cults. Uh, the the world is full of them. Yeah, and you have tribes. Mm -hmm. I'm, get, I'm guessing when it comes to the tribes, they're more uh, they're more on the nomadic ends of things, where they don't uh, they'll go but they'll go between settlement to settlement, but they won't um, yes. stay too long in an area. Exactly. Yes, they will be very nomadic. The, some of them are based in Arkanar, that is like our desert area that's very full of mutants. Mm -hmm. And the, there is another one uh, called the School Riders that will be based on the warm spine and those are more like marauders and they like they hunt and they are also mercenaries and they have a continual fight against the nearby city called Notch. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing I'm guessing in terms of fight it's more of them showing up, raiding what they can and then getting out. Exactly, a skirmishes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although when you, when I when I when I hear skull riders, I get I get the vision of the of of them being them being very analogous to say um to say Mongo to say Mongolian raiders. Yes, yes, they they ride on um, on um, very large ostriches. That uh, in fact, there's the they ride on terror birds. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you if you have heard of them they were prehistoric animals yeah they are uh, yes so they ride right on, on those uh, there are a couple of animals um, i think that uh, the whole thing it's uh, touches the prehistoric also uh, because i wanted to go uh, in the direction of you know like the dawn of the creation of a world or the origins of man i think that the theme of including animal species from prehistoric times uh, was uh, very uh, coherent with all that. Yeah. Now, when it com when when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to over when it comes to um, travel, this is something that I've that I've often seen get really glossed over by a lot of by a lot of um game by a lot of games. Um, some mm -hmm. ga some games in more recent years have attempt have attempted to tackle this. But do you have do you have a um, rule set 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 aside for de for dealing with um, travel over long distances and the and the amount of days and how how long it, how long it would take to go how long it would take to go by foot or by um, by some by some sort of by some sort of mount? Honestly, I hate bookkeeping, Mildra. <laughs> <laughs> I I hate it when you start uh, I don't know uh, writing down uh, how many rations you spend or the water that you have left. Mm -hmm. I understand that it has to do with the survival thing. Uh, I solved uh, at least the book uh, keeping side of stuff uh, regarding rations and all that uh, with the usage dice. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're familiar with that. I'm yes. using that. Uh, I think it's a great system. It works for everything that can be spent. Um, and regarding traveling, no, there is a 
there is a, a basic uh, distance table and you know how much day, how many weeks or days it takes. There is a random events table. There is a random minor events table uh, to to make it a bit more fun the traveling. But uh, I didn't want to flood the book with uh, with uh, special rules or information. So I wanted to concentrate on the on the lore and uh, a very uh, minimal light system that. Uh, works and you can learn in 10 minutes mm -hmm. now uh, so 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 you can consider the book uh, you i think that that's why i say in the in the kickstarter that the the system uh, it's even optional if you if you prefer to use your system that's uh, fine with me i'm just proposing a system mm -hmm. that works for me and my group but you can perfectly consider the core book as a agnostic system to be used for your own setting or for your own world. I think it, well, one, one of my playgroups are uh, even using Warblam as a, in their uh, Morgwork campaign, but uh, they are stating that Warblam is set 2,000 years before the two-headed basilisk uh, came. Uh, so they are explaining, it's like they are explaining that it, it will uh, uh, later came out from the void and it will set the whole apocalypse thing at the end of the world. Mm -hmm. But that still hasn't happened in here, Warband. They are like yeah. uh, going to the history of it. It's, yeah. So it's, it works. I think it works. Mm -hmm. um, now, I re now um, I do want to give my, con I, once again, my congrats for how well it's done so far, because you, you had only asked for 1,400, and it's currently at 16.3 thousand. With twenty-two yes. days to go, um, how? What now? Once the once the um, once the all, all the paperwork from the from the post Kickstarter part ends up shaking out, um, what do you what do you see as far as the release window? I think the release window uh, will be around the end of March, maybe beginnings of April. Uh, truth be told, I am including a lot of things because of the success of the campaign. So that enabled me to hire a bigger team and make more stuff and produce a, a better product overall. Uh, so that might have stretched a bit uh, one or two weeks uh, my product, but uh, no, it's looking incredible it's looking great i'm very happy i have been working on this mildra for the last seven months i mm -hmm. quit my job to do this so <laughs> so it's like uh, all or nothing for me <laughs> all right I, all right i can see i can definitely see that um and i do i do wish the be i do wish the best of luck when it comes to when it comes to getting when it comes to seeing this through and to make sure i don't end up jinxing there we go. <laughs> Let's touch wood. <laughs> oh. But yes, I'm. Uh, it has been a lot of work, uh, uh, a lot of restless nights trying to figure out uh, a world that makes sense. Uh, I wanted to present uh, uh, I don't know, themes that are uh, mature or adult, and, uh, and they are not so. Maybe not so commonly discussed or seen in some RPGs. Um, I think that uh, I think that games can be entertainment, but that there can also be uh, instruments of understanding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I want to go in that direction. I went in that direction uh, with Neurocity. I think that it worked uh, very good, and I, w I am going in, in that direction with Warblam. Yeah. And both worlds uh, are. Uh, I feel that they are connected, but th there will be three possible types of connection included in the core book. Mm -hmm. And I will, and um, I will definitely be looking forward to how to how that shakes out. Um, with all with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come out to brave the hell of time zones and come back up to the temple to enjoy the insanity here <laughs> no no i appreciate it mildra i always love to come to the temple mm -hmm. 
uh, I appreciate the work you do for all of us independent creators, and I think that it's very important uh, what you're doing. Yeah. And, of course, anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> Thank you, Mildra. Cheers. And, of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, where they're all, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>